Hello and welcome to the Rangers News YouTube channel. My name is Cameron Willis and I'm sitting with Mr. James Black. Hello. Um, on today's episode, we're going to discuss none other than the one and only Nico Katic, who has probably come back down to earth after that giant leap at Celtic Park, which uh, got us a 2-1-1 against our biggest rivals at the turn of the year. Um, the big defender was at fault for both goals um, and looked decidedly shaky against St Johnston. Um, he displayed Shaky's a, been kind. He just displayed a massive inability to clear the ball, to deal with anything over the top. Useless with it at his feet, and it was probably it was actually un unarguably his worst performance in a Rangers shirt so far. And for a player that is so adored by the Rangers support, I think it was a massive kind of bullet to that reputation this weekend. Steven Gerrard's been routinely criticised for dropping him um, over the course of the last eighteen months. Um, he dropped him for Joe Worrell, dropped him for Philip Holanda. He's come back into the team and shown in flashes why he is highly rated, he is still young, um, and why Rangers paid £2 million for him um, at the start of last season. But now we're going to ask, what next for uh, for Nico Cottage? The bench, most likely. Um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't start on Wednesday night against Braga. I think that'd be a big call. I think it would, but I think his recent form kind of merits it. Um, it would be the absolute kick up the arse that he needs. He's been, like, St. Johnson was woeful, absolutely woeful. Um, and Chris Boyd destroyed him on Sky I Sports know. after. Absolutely tore him to pieces. Uh, he said it was the, the worst performance he's seen from a Rangers centre-back in his, in his lifetime, which may be a little bit unfair. Um... I can remember some absolute nightmare defensive shows for players in the past, uh, particularly some of the big European defeats that we've had where it's just uh, it's brought you to tears watching it. So I don't think he was that bad, but Jesus, he was bad yesterday. He was he bad was yesterday. I mean, um, there, was, there, was so, there was times when uh, he was just punting it up in the air instead of putting it out. Um, he, he, I, think, I think one of the... I think yesterday was... Uh, was was the most extreme example of all of Nico Cartage's flaws coming out at once, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to give the guy too much a hard time considering um, how well he has played in patches, how highly rated he is, how liked he is by the Rangers support. He's we, he was achieving a bit of cult hero status. The 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 enthusiasm that he plays with, the 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 bravery that he plays with. His ability in the air, you know, there are, there are there's undoubtedly a good player there, but there are elements of his game that are too rash. He's too rushed. Sometimes he's too committed. You know, he, his decision his decision making's a bit off. He, 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 yesterday, one of the biggest frustrations I had with him every time the ball went through him, he just completely killed the momentum of the move. So the ball would come to his feet and he'd turn round and he'd pay it back. Or he, he's just, he, there's elements of his game that I believe needs to polish. And I think that many Rangers fans who criticised Steven Gerrard for dropping him for Warrell last season are now seeing more obviously um, mm. the, the, the reasons why. I think that he's got a long way to go, but I don't want to sit here and, and, and completely slaughter him and, and, and hang him out to dry. I think, I think that He's a good player, and I think that his career will go on to prove oh, he's that. There's definitely a talented, but talented defender. He, he's he's a big, his, his decision making at, at, at big moments um, was proved costly yesterday. There's almost times it feels like he's trying too hard to impress. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just like we've no been back yesterday in particular. Can I a couple of points? He's just like, just do the simple thing and just get the ball away. And clear it. Then he try and do the big Hollywood clearance or the kind of the big superstar putting header through eight different players. Just keep things simple. And he doesn't do that. Sometimes he just uh, kind of blood rushes to his head, and he'll go on these crazy runs, or he'll he'll kind of go in with a, a mental challenge, or he'll just he'll have one of the moments where mm. you're kind of less scratching your head. And it's maybe just an experience. He is still what twenty two. 23, I think. So, I mean, he's, he's a, still a very young guy and he's not exactly played a huge amount of first-team football. But he just he lacks that kind of that street smarts that, as much as he was derided at times, 
Joe Worrell seemed to have him a bit more. He was that wee bit more pragmatic, that wee bit more, I don't need to go and rush into a challenge here. Mm. So maybe it's easier just to play a five-yard pass and go for a 50-yard diagonal. And that's kind of the part of the game's, the part of his game that, that Katic still at times needs to kind of eradicate. Um, and it was not even yesterday. There's been the last few games, he's, there's been a few times where him and Connor Goldson have been going for the same balls. Or There was a point where it looked like Connor Goldson was actually marking Katic. It was just Katic, Katic's position was just all over the place. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. So, I mean, Helland has been a big miss. I, I think Stephen Jarrett said that as well. Uh, yeah, he yeah. Wants him back. I think those were uh, very if you, pointed if you comments. If you remember when... Before Helen got injured, they got injured in the League Cup final against Celtic. Rangers went on an astonishing run defensively. Um, I think it was probably like a, a, a one of our strongest periods of the season. It's been really, we, really good defensively. We, we had Helen and Goldson, and even when Katic came back in in December, he mm. was he, he was good. So uh, when when it's gone wrong, I don't know. I think I think Nico Katic is a squad player. I don't think that he's a starter yet. Um, I think that's been kind of thrust on him by Hellander's injury. I think that Connor Goldson maybe... I, I, I mean, there was a period in the season when I thought Connor Goldson was absolutely outstanding. He was controlling everything. He, he, he was good with the ball at his feet. He was commanding. And he just seems to have lost that wee edge. The whole team seems short of confidence. But I think he struggles to consistently deal with the kind of leadership role in in, in, a, in a defence and having and the experienced Hellander who's got ten international caps um helps him. And it, it, it's, it's not to berate Conor Goldson too much. I mean yesterday he was poor as well. He's trying to like Cruyff turn outside his eighteen yard box and we've done it about two or three times. You're like, what are you doing man? Both the centre halves were poor. But um I I think Goldson and is a strong, what will prove to be our strongest partnership, and that's a big mess. We spent three million pounds on that guy, mm -hmm. in in the summer, um, so he was obviously bought as a starter, and after settling into Scotland, he was beginning to show his quality. But there was a month, there was a run of six or seven games, six games maybe where we were very impressive with Cartage in the side as well. So disappointing but it just needs shaking up Edinson's looked good as well when he's came in but he's just yeah. a young boy you know it's, it's a lot of pressure to put on him if you're thinking that he's going to come in on Wednesday night but that sometimes that's the making of players like you've got nothing to lose really yeah toss it I've, I mean it, it'd be so devastating for Cattage if he got if he got dropped after that it's generally struggled to drop drop players in general but and, I, 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 I think there'd be few to would argue that Cattage deserves it I mean, after his last couple of games, you need to have a tight defence on Wednesday night. I mean, you've already conceded two away goals, so you can't you can't afford to concede two or three goals in so Portugal. So you think um, that's the that's the answer to the form is to give him a run out of the team? Just, just get him a boot up the arse. Um, and it's a funny one because I think with some players, you, you let them play through it. I mean, I've said before with Ryan Kent, pointing to James Tavernier, I think with some players, it's a case of you just you let them get their head down and work away and do their thing. But I think with Katic, I think with any defender in particular, mm. it's such a high-risk area where, you know, if you're a left winger or a left inverted number 10, um, you can you can afford to make that mistake. And it's, it's not quite as critical. If you're a centre-back, you lose your man. You know, that can be a big game-changing moment.